gentlemen. You're all very welcome to, the, to this conferring ceremony. My name is Terry Toomey and I'll be your master of ceremonies for today. This conferring ceremony is streaming live on the internet, so if you're aware of somebody who couldn't make it today, if you send them a quick text, they can watch it online. A couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Firstly, there are seven emergency exits from this auditorium. One to the left and one to the right here at the front. Two in each of the glass walls at the side and one at the back where you came in earlier on. Before we begin the, the formal proceedings, could I ask you to please uh, turn off your mobile phones? The formal proceedings begin today with the academic procession. I invite you to now please stand for the academic procession. Thank you, Michael. Please be seated. I will begin by introducing the members of the conferring panel to you. To my right is Mr. Tony Brazel, member of the governing body of Limerick Institute of Technology. In the centre is Professor Vincent Canaan, President of Limerick Institute of Technology. And finally, Ms. Maria Kine, Head of the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology. I now call on Mr. Tony Brazel, Member of the Governing Body of Limerick Institute of Technology, to address you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And it's my pleasant task to welcome you to LIT and to uh, 
begin the proceedings of this very special day for our, for our graduates. I suppose um, this is the third session we've had today. We've had full houses all the way through. Um, at the end of today, we'll have graduated over 500 students, another 300 to 400 next day and next week and the week after. So it's a great day for us in LIT to celebrate the work of the staff and the students in coming to this level of achievement. It's landmark for, for all of the students in the sense that it gives us an opportunity to share with you a little of what we rightly feel has been a successfully completed course of studies. In celebrating the achievement, it is important to recognise that those who have helped you along the way, without them, your success might not have been possible, but would certainly have been more difficult. So we salute you, the parents, relatives, friends, supporters of all these graduates today, because in many cases, without your help, today wouldn't have been possible. Thank you for that. For the vast majority, the influence, encouragement, support, and in many cases of the sacrifice made have been absolutely crucial. And without that solidarity, you would not have been able to benefit from the dedicated efforts that the teaching and support staff here at LIT have put into your education and training and more widely into your development as good people and citizens. The friendships that you have made are also an important resource for your future lives. You have helped each other through the past few years and an, and an effort to maintain those links is well worth thinking about and maintaining. Social, business, political and interest group networks are increasingly important in all our lives. They are all the better when they are based on the friendships and mutual support forged whilst at college. Those of you graduating today are part of the most highly educated generation that Ireland has known. You are emerging from the system at a time when employment opportunities in Ireland are expanding rapidly. I don't have to remind all of you that there's hardly been a week in the re last recent months but that there have been job announcements for this city. The interesting thing is that whether it's Regeneron or whether it's Northern Trust or whoever is bringing more jobs, that almost all of the jobs that are being announced and are going to happen within the next 12 months, all of those jobs fit exactly the profile of our graduates. So you're now going into a world of great opportunity. We pride ourselves here in the past that within a short period of graduation, nine out of every 10 graduates are either in employment or doing further education. That's a great testimony to the quality of the education that's been afforded here and the fact that we are in line with what the market needs. I've been at a number of job announcements of these firms who are coming to the city and they say two things. They're here because of A, Shannon Airport giving them access to the outer world, but most importantly, they're here because of the talent pool of young people emerging from our colleges. And it's not widely understood and accepted that we in Limerick have a student third level population of close to 25,000 students. So we have a huge nucleus of people coming through the system who are going to fuel the needs of those new employers who are coming into the region. So against that backdrop, you're going into a great future and you're fortunate. We've come out of a 10 year recession, economic recession, which uh, none of us wanted, but we, we had to endure. And you're just coming at the very right moment when the economy is turning and the opportunities are there for you to uh, do that. I suppose it's true to say that not all sections of our society and not all parts of the country have, are feeling the positive effects of the return to growth uh, to the same extent. But that's a challenge for others and particularly for government. Growth and expansion is being felt is, is certainly been spent by those seeking employment in the medium and high tech sectors, and particularly here in the Midwest. And those who see their occupational future in the various public services and in the cultural and service sectors are also beginning to see an improvement in their fortunes as demand in the economy and taxation arises. Half of our entire workforce 
comprises of people with third level education and qualifications and they have much higher employment levels and significantly higher lifetime earnings than those who have been less fortunate educationally. For those of you graduating today, your third level qualifications equip you to benefit personally from increasing opportunities in the labour market and to contribute to the development of our society more widely. It, it is vital that the knowledge and skills that you have developed here at LIT are used not just for your own benefit, but also to contribute to the building of a society which extends the fruits of modern civilization to all of our citizens. Uh, I just also want to say that in congratulating all the graduates and their parents, I also want to say on behalf of the governing body our sincere thanks to the sterling work done by our academic staff. The staff here empathise very much with the student population, have gone the extra mile in many, many cases, and we as a governing body would like it to be known and recorded that a lot of the success of all the people who are coming through the doors here is in, because of the high level commitment of, the, of our staff members. I have sat on a number of interview boards and I've been terribly impressed at the high level of people coming in to take up employment within the college. This is a serious place. This is a place where people are beginning to recognise that we have the qualities needed to give a good education to people. And people who want employment and who want to contribute to the education system see this as a hotbed for the future. So thanks to all the academic people on that front. Finally, I just want to congratulate all the, the graduates today. You have a wonderful world out, outside waiting for you. Do remember LIT. When you get into positions of power and authority, remember your old alma mater. And always speak well of it. And finally, never forget the people who helped you here in the audience. Think of them as well. Congratulations. I now call on Ms. Maria Kine, Head of the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, to address you. Graduates, Chairman, President, Registrar, Members of Governing Body, Academic Staff, Award Sponsors and Guests. You are welcome to this graduation ceremony for the Department of the Built Environment and the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering. The graduation ceremony today recognises your achievement in attaining a level of education reflected in the awards that you will receive this afternoon. And I offer you all my heartiest congratulations. Today is a recognition of your achievements what you have worked for over the last number of years. The Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology was established in September 2013 to support the development of education programs in the engineering, built environment, science and information technology disciplines. The departments of built environment and mechanical and automobile engineering form two of the five departments in the faculty. The other three departments are Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Applied Science and Information Technology. The faculty is one of the largest centres of education in the STEM disciplines in Ireland and has over 2,300 full-time students, considerable evening continuing education programmes and also delivers programmes to over 400 apprentice students. I would like to thank the Heads of Department, Mr. Pat Gill and Dr. Philip Ryan, for their support to the faculty, to their departments, to their staff and students. Some faculty highlights from the last 12 months within the, the work of the departments include the achievement by the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering of ongoing approval and revalidation of all programmes for a further five years as an outcome of the Department Programmatic Review. 
All programs were modified to ensure relevance to industry and programs with modern curricula using appropriate technologies. I am particularly pleased to see our first group of graduate students from our Level 6 Precision Engineering program here today. Faculty staff have established close links with the Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association, the PTMA, who are our partners in the development and delivery of this program. A very successful manufacturing solutions event was organised in LIT in partnership with the PTMA and the UK-based GTMA in May last year, where over 90 Irish and UK exhibitors displayed their product to over 500 visitors. I would like to express my gratitude to our industry partners who have provided us with state-of-the-art equipment, which will enhance the educational experience of our students. Staff from both departments continue to engage with the LIT campus master planners to provide advice on the design of the Kuna campus for our engineering and built environment programs. The faculty has been at the forefront of our new program development and reinvigorating existing programs to meet the needs of industry in our region. We actively participate on the Midwest Regional Skills Forum and collaborate with the Skills Forum Manager to identify and respond to current and future skills needs. For instance, the faculty contributed to an apprentice awareness event for employers in September, which was organised by the Forum. We have a long tradition of providing apprenticeship programmes in the departments, including cap carpentry and joinery, light vehicle motor mechanics and fitting. The Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering have developed and are now running the first new apprenticeship programme in Ireland. The Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering has been recently approved by the Apprenticeship Council to develop two new apprenticeships in precision machining and quality control and aircraft asset management. An application for another new apprenticeship in the built environment discipline is, in, is with the Apprenticeship Council. The development of new programmes has led to the validation of new awards this year. A Level 8 Ab initio BNG in Mechanical Engineering and a Level 7 Ab initio BNG in Precision Engineering. The faculty continues to work with our industry partners to, mo to promote our programmes to potential students. A successful Limerick for Engineering showcase was held in May where over 1,000 secondary school students and their parents attended the event. In addition, a successful Engineers Week and Construction Day was held again this year, where students from 45 second level schools and their 60 engineering teachers visited LIT and were given presentations on an engineering topic and demonstrations of engineering and built environment laboratory active learning classes. A new system for managing the examination process has been successfully run in the Department of the Built Environment. The Guru system allows for online communication and generation of examination papers between academic staff, external examiners and LIT administration. Springboard funding was achieved this year to support students on the Masters in Quantity Surveying and the Honours Degree in Process Engineering and Management programmes and that has been very successful. The Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering currently has seven registered postgraduate students and are proud to graduate their first PhD candidate today. In addition, a second PhD graduate graduated earlier today from the faculty, co-supervised by a staff member from this department. Dr. Dara Nocton secured two research grants in the emerging medical technology sector worth just short of €1 million, Euros, one of which is the largest ever grant from the Enterprise Ireland to an Institute of Technology. A further eight full-time professional researchers are employed by the department across a broad range of research topics. John Dillon, storesman in the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, passed away in May after many years of excellent service to LIT. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Two staff members retired, Ailby MacDonald and Jerry Ryan. I would like to acknowledge their years of service to LIT and I would 
like to wish them a happy retirement. Michael Ryan, Palace Henry Agricultural College, also retired this year. He supported LIT students over a long number of years in the Higher Certificate in Mechanical Automation course. Our faculty has exceptionally strong links with the construction, mechanical and automobile engineering industries through the Active Learning Placement Year, through the Institute's Career Fair, through research partnerships, through its graduates and the work experience of many of its staff. Today's graduates have the knowledge, skills and competencies to contribute actively to these industries. We appreciate the recognition given to this award ceremony by our industry partners through their presence here today and their ongoing and very valued support for our programs. On behalf of the staff, I would like to congratulate all of the graduates being conferred here today. You are graduating with qualifications which are highly regarded by the construction, mechanical and automobile engineering industries, both here and abroad. These qualifications, which are accredited by the major industry professional bodies and hence have considerable value added to them, will enable you to work throughout the world. In particular, I would like to congratulate our staff members, Jared Hartigan and Adrian Chaplin. At this session, we will be graduating Adrian with a PhD and Jer with a Master's by Research Degree. Accreditation of our programmes by professional bodies is highly valued by the departments, our staff and graduates. I wish to acknowledge the assistance that professional bodies have given in programme accreditation and development through the provision of expert advice and external examiners over many years. Graduates, we have strived to prepare you to be capable and confident people who are proficient in your chosen disciplines. We expect that we will have given you the ability to look to the long term in terms of planning your career and to appreciate the value and need for further education and professional development. Not least, I wish to acknowledge the contrib contribution of the academic, technical, administration and support staff of both departments and their presence here today is an indication of their commitment, enthusiasm and dedication to their students. I wish to congratulate them for their contribution in producing such good graduates and I join them in saluting your achievement and in wishing you fulfilment in your working and professional lives. Thank you. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Professor Vincent Canaan, to formally confer the LIT awards on the graduates. Harkyonni Institute, Bronam Dat Nok Tani, Er Hoglamori in the Institute, Ata Tereshin Kagdan Shin, Awanchimak, Ogus Eriam Gokorfer, the Hoglamori Shin, Imaar, Konanbar, a Horvitz Dove Gofer Mool. On behalf of the Institute, I hereby confer awards on the learners of the Institute who have received and achieved the standard for those awards, and I ask that those learners be presented to me so that I may formally present them with their parchment. I now request the President, Professor Vincent Canaan, to present the parchments and invite the Head of Department of the Built Environment, Mr. Pat Gill, to announce the graduates. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, 
and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Science in Construction, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Carol Shane. Donegan James. Don Aaron in absentia. Heffernan Brendan in absentia. Lockery Declan in absentia. Scully Oshin. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Science in Construction Practice, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Caulfield Dara. Connery Shane. Delaney Ronan in absentia. Green James. Leahy Michael. Maloney Eric in absentia. Smith Jordan in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science in Construction in Site Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Keen Paul. Maloney Jonathan. Nevin Connor in absentia. Ryan Ben. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science in Construction in Health and Safety, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Kavanagh James in absentia. Ryan Owen in absentia. Ryan David in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidate who has successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and is worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Arts in Interior Design and Technology, and I request you to present her parchment to her. Moyo Melody in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Arts in Interior Design and Technology. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Ali Wakar, in absentia. Bonina Yunus. Corbett Clare. <laughs> Hannafin Amanda. <laughs> Horan Patricia. <laughs> McGillicuddy Sinead.
President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering in Civil and Environmental Engineering, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Redmond Andrew in absentia, Sibanda Christopher in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Al Busaidi Mayu. Al Shibli Mahmoud Saeed. Begayan Yosef. Casey Stephen. Cosgrove Gareth. Diaz Miguel El Sheikh Sif Sun Hao Jing Ruigia in absentia Kelly Dermot. Lynch Shane. McInerney Eamon. McLaughlin Scott. Nesbitt Ray. Ryan Jason. Zuandu Yu in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Civil Engineering Management, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Brosnan Daniel. <clears throat> Downs Joseph. Duhig Shane in absentia. Lynch James. <clears throat> Nolan Keen. <clears throat> O'Connor Derry. O'Gorman Garod. <clears throat> Pei Siqui in absentia. Pugavko Patrick. <clears throat> President, I present to you the following candidate who has successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology. Department of the Built Environment and is worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Science in Sustainable Building and Renewable Energy. And I request you to present his parchment to him, Ikoro Armstrong in absentia. 
President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Building and Renewable Energy, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Begley Jermuth in absentia. Fennel Daniel. <laughs> Moynihan Gerard. <laughs> Noonan Damien in absentia. Quinn Nicole in absentia. Quirk Stephen. Reen Jonathan. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Science in Property Valuation and Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Benson Darren in absentia, Darcy Seamus in absentia, McGee Sean in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Property Valuation and Management and I request you to present their parchments to them. Breen Rebecca. <laughs> Chon Wen Lee. <laughs> Cross Paul in absentia. Keen Colleen. Linehan Joseph in absentia. McManus Laura. <laughs> Wallace Gillian. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology. Department of the Built Environment and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Construction Management and I request you to present their parchments to them. Coffee Brian in absentia. Costello Jordan. <laughs> Cronin Trevor. Daly Jason. <laughs> Lenehan Sean. <laughs> O'Sullivan Patrick. <laughs> Walsh Dara. Woods Ronan. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Energy Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Hargreaves Luke in absentia. Lacey James. <laughs> McCarthy Patrick in absentia. Midlochlan Thomas. <laughs> Lee 
Matram Thomas in absentia. Nalan David. O'Toole Patrick. Perez Castillo Adolfo in absentia. Ryan Christopher. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Fox Ian. Griffin Ian. Hallinan Paul. Koe Jin Jun. Lynch James in absentia. Murphy Tony. Power Gary Stapleton Shane President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment and are worthy of the award of Master of Science in Quantity Surveying, and I request you to present their parchments to them. O'Connell Sean. <clears throat> Sherry Cormack in absentia. Lee Sukyan. President, I present to you the following candidate who has successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and is worthy of the award of Master of Science by Research, and I request you to present his parchment to him. Hartigan Jer. I now request the President, Professor Vincent Canaan, to present the parchments and invite the Head of Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, Dr. Philip Ryan, to announce the graduates. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering in Agricultural Mechanization, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Burn Inda. Uh, Bowden John. Uh, Bolfin Dara in Abstentia. Uh, Conway Sean. Uh, Don Thomas. Fitzpatrick Michael. Uh, Henny Bray James. Uh, Kelly Christopher in absentia. 
uh, Kieran's McCarthan. Lacey Thomas. Uh, Linehan Connor in absentia. Uh, Linehan Kevin in absentia. Linehan Cahill in absentia. Mahar Shane in absentia. Malone Luke. A man, Paul. <laughs> uh, McCarthy, Dermot, in absentia. Uh, MacDonald, Ian. <laughs> McGettigan, Sean. Uh, Meany, James. Uh, Miss Kiela David, <laughs> O'Brien Stephen, <laughs> O'Carroll Kieran, <laughs> O'Donoghue Aidan. O'Reilly Owen, <laughs> O'Shane Stephen in absentia, Parcel Owen in absentia, uh, Redmond John, <laughs> Roach Adrian. Uh, Ryan Nicholas in absentia, uh, Sheehan Owen in absentia, Sheridan Lorcan, uh, Trainer Garoud, Walsh James, Ward Ryan. Ward Mark, <laughs> Whitney David, <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering in Automobile Technology and I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Carmody Maud. <laughs> Conroy Thomas. Uh, Conroy Thomas is in abstinence here. Uh, Conway Owen. McCarthy Connor is in absentia. Uh, McLaughlin uh, Mihal. Uh, Murray Jaden in absentia. O'Brien Nile. Uh, Reynolds Paul. Uh, Strikey Mikolai in absentia, uh, Toomey Scott in absentia, and Alan Walsh, please. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering in Mechanical Engineering and I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Foley Thomas in absentia, and Ryan Philip in, in absentia. Um, 
President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Al Dali Ali. Al Husini Khalid. Al Jabri Abdulalaman. Al Mashri Amar Saud Salim. Al Maruki Ahmed. Al Shababi uh, Sulaiman Salif Sultan. <laughs> Al Shababi Sulaiman Salif Sultan. <laughs> Al Rabi uh, Sulaiman Salif Sultan. <laughs> Al Hani Sultan Hamad Shah Kahan has already been presented. Okay. Ali Musaman Madi. Al Nadabi Al Mahandanad. A Barrett Garoud in Abstentia. Bashikovas Bertinas <laughs> Abrofi Galvin <laughs> uh, Cleary Connor <laughs> Co Condon David in Abstentia Connolly Patrick Farrell Dearmid <laughs> Fury Andrew <laughs> Fitzgerald Jard <laughs> Goff David Horan Dara in Abstentia, Lynch uh, Aaron, <laughs> Maher Ivan, <laughs> McMahon Barry in Abstentia, Maloney Bryan, <laughs> Mongan Patrick. Uh, Moran Jeremiah in Abstentia, Mulcahy Kevin in Abstentia, uh, Neto uh, Bruno, <laughs> uh, Noonan Christopher in Abstentia, O'Brien Kenneth in Abstentia, O'Donnell Glenn in Abstentia, O'Donnell Stephen in Abstentia, O'Reardon Brandon. Rilhan Jack in Abstentia, Ryan Collin in Abstentia, 
uh, Scarrett Dillon. <clears throat> Uh, stretch Mark. Uh, Tahira He Anderson. Uh, Timony Collum in Abstentia. Whelan Graham. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Mechanical Engineering Facilities. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Brosnan, David. Casey Ivan. Gastner Joseph. Cody James. Colopy Danielle. Condon Owen. Conroy David in Abstentia, uh, Dolan Mark, Egan Jerry, O'Connor Dara, O'Reardon Andrew. Rio Stephen, and Sipagan Raphael. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Road Transport Technology and Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Burns, Brian in Abstentia, Carey, Jamie. Connella Cormack, Cronin Dunnock, Pro Stephen, Cunningham Sean in Abstentia, Gallagher Martin. Mamala Raphael, McCall Jared, McMahon Shane, O'Connor Richard in Abstentia, O'Donovan Bryan. O'Toole Liam, Ryan Lee, Williams Kevin, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Process and Engineering Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Augustinek Matthias in Abstentia. Uh, Balashnikovas Igaras, <laughs> C 
Cochran, Owen. Uh, Cronin, Nicholas. Uh, Deneen, Dara, Darren, in absentia. Uh, Dooley, John. Uh, El Gamondi, uh, Luffy. Uh, Foley, Jared. Healy, Mark. Uh, Khalid, Uvasim, in absentia. Markham, Sean. In absentia, Morrissey, Carol, in absentia, Mulan, Brian, in absentia, Mulqueen, Jonathan, <laughs> O'Reilly, Ryan, <laughs> Prendival, Philip. Reynolds, Matthew, in absentia. Ryan, James. <laughs> Sullivan, David, in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering and Precision Engineering. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Chambers, Dean, in absentia. Uh, Kulnahan, Philip, in absentia. Uh, Gilfoyle Maeve. <laughs> Long Jerry in absentia. Mahar Dennis in absentia. McElroy James in absentia. Uh, Mongan Kiron. <laughs> Ryan Paul. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Precision Engineering, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Okay, Vizikos Arunas. Casey Thomas in absentia, Devitt Shane, <laughs> Kelleher Anthony, <laughs> Kelly Kevin in absentia, Lawler Achillian. <laughs> uh, McCormick Jeffrey. Uh, we now have a postgraduate award uh, for a Doctor of Philosophy. Um, so if I may, if I could call the supervisors up and the awardee uh, to the president, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, with great honour that I present to you Mr. Adrian Chapman, who has successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering in Limerick Institute of Technology, and is worthy of the award of Doctor of Philosophy. Um, so if I could have the gowning ceremony, please.
In exercise of the powers vested in it by statute, the Academic Council of the University of Limerick has, on recommendation of the Limerick Institute of Technology, conferred the award of Doctor of Philosophy on Adrian Chaplin. And may I be the first to congratulate Dr. Adrian Chapman. How do we follow that? Congratulations, Adrian. Okay, we come now to the special awards ceremony for outstanding achievement. And I'd like to invite the President and uh, Tony Brazel from the governing body to present these awards. Our first award is the Chartered Institute of Buildings CIOB Award, presented by Michael Gallagher of CIOB. The Chartered Institute of Building Award is for excellence in the final year project of the BSC in Construction in Site Management. And this CIOB Award goes to Jonathan Maloney. Our next award is the Roadstone Wood Group Award, presented by Maria Kine of LIT. The Roadstone Wood Group Award is for excellence on the BSC in sustainable building and renewable energy. And the award goes to Daniel Fennell. Our next award is the Punch Consulting Engineers Award presented by Donald Gallery of Punch Consulting Engineers. So the Punch Consulting Engineers Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering. And the Punch Consulting Engineer, Engineers Award goes to Saif El Sheikh. <laughs> Our next award is the Aidan Feeney Perpetual Award, presented by Maria Kine of LIT. The Aidan Feeney Perpetual Award is for excellence in the subject Highways Engineering and Management Practice 
on the Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering. And the award goes to Muyid Al Basaid. Our next award is again from the Chartered Institute of Building, CIOB Award, presented by Michael Gallagher of CIOB. The, there are two awards being made to the same student. So the first award is for excellence on the BSc Honours in Civil Engineering Management. And the second award is for excellence in the dissertation on the BSc Honours in Civil Engineering Management. And both of these awards go to James Lynch. Our next award is the ACOM Award presented by Thomas Kelly of ACOM. The ACOM Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying. And this year the ACOM Award goes to Paul Hall Hallinan. Our next award is the Linesight Award, presented by Frank O'Sullivan of Linesight. The Linesight Award is for excellence in the dissertation on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying. And the Linesight Award goes to Jinjun Kale. Our next award is the Society of Chartered Surveyors Ireland Award, presented by Carlo Hanrahan of the Society of Chartered Surveyors in Ireland. The Society of Chartered Surveyors Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Property Valuation and Management. And the award goes to Gillian Wallace. Our next award is the Construction, Construction Industry Federation Award, presented by Ronan O'Brien of CIF. The Construction Industry Federation Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Construction Management. And the award goes to 
Ronan Woods. Our next award is the Chartered Institute of Building CIOB Award, presented by Michael Gallagher of CIOB. This Chartered Institute of Building Award is for excellence in the dissertation on the BSc Honours in Construction Management. And the award again goes to Ronan Woods. Our next award is the Allied Irish Banks Award, presented by Sinead Lavin of AIB Bank. The Allied Irish Banks Award is for excellence in the Bachelor of Science Honours in Energy Management. And the Allied Irish Banks Award goes to Patrick O'Toole. Our next award is the Rogerson Redden and Associates Award, presented by Kieran Clossey of Rogerson Redden and Associates. This award is for excellence on the Masters of Science in Quantity Surveying. And the Rogerson Redden and Associates Award goes to Suk Yan Lee. So that was the last of our awards for the built environment and construction industry. We now move to the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering Awards. And the first of these awards is the Farm Tractor Machinery Trade Association Award presented by Conor McGuinness. The Farm Tractor Machinery Trade Association Award is for excellence on the higher certificate in engineering in agricultural mechanisation. And the award goes to Thomas Dunn. Our next award is the Lee Trans International Award, presented by Jerry McCall of Lee Trans. And Jerry graduated today, so he had to take the gowns off before he came up. Well done, Jerry. <laughs> the Lee Trans International Award is for excellence on the higher certificate in engineering in automobile technology. And the award goes to Michael McLaughlin.
Our next award is the Costal Award, presented by Coleman Byrne of Costal. The Costal Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering. And the Costal Award goes to Patrick Morgan. Our next award is the MTech Award, presented by Maria Kine of LIT. The MTech Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Mechanical Engineering Facilities. And the MTech Award goes to Andrew O'Reardon. Our next award is the Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association Award, presented by John Divot of PTMA. The Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association Award is for excellence on the higher certificate in engineering in precision engineering. And the PTMA award goes to Maeve Gilfoyle. Our next award again is from the Precision Turn Parts Manufacturing Association Award. It will be presented by John Devitt, and the award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Precision Engineering. And the PTMA award goes to Killian Lawler. Our final award today is the Molex Award, presented by Paul Delahunt of Molex. The Molex Award is for excellence in the dissertation on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Precision and Engineering Management. And the Molex Award goes to Ryan O'Neill. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Prof.
Professor Vincent Canaan to address you. Thanks. A carja to Ahas and Don Arma Van Shahanu, August Bawait Loma Kid Mila Falsha Cordart Galair. Friends, you're very welcome. And just when you thought that might be the last thing and you could get out of here, well, let me tell you that it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. There's just one more thing to do. Uh, and uh, I'm going to hold the graduates back for another while. And of course, they're esteemed friends and a family. Because uh, <clears throat> I hopefully have some uh, important things to say about LIT and about the future of higher education. So I would ask your indulgence for another few minutes uh, as we go through this. So today really is, uh, is about the graduates, and we're absolutely delighted at this batch of our newest graduates. Um, today is a special day for you, uh, your families, and it's also a special day though for LIT. These are the days that reveal to us the value of the work that we do, uh, and the value that everyone here has put in over a period of years. You, the graduates, your families, and indeed the staff of LIT. Because this is the one time in the year when we get to come together as a single community to recognise our own for the commitment, the ability and indeed the perseverance that you have shown in getting to this stage. So to the parents, the guardians, the spouses and the families of the graduates, I also say heartiest congratulations. You too are part of our community and I am sure there were times when you didn't think this day would ever arrive. But it has, thankfully. Uh, so perhaps though, in recognition of that, the graduates could stand up, turn to your families, and give those families a well-deserved round of applause. So I invite the graduates to stand up and uh, say thank you. Very good. Well, you, you the graduates, uh, you've received your education from an institution whose roots in technical and artistic education go right back to the foundation of the Limerick Athenaeum in 1852. And this year, though, we continue to add new chapters to our history. As we see the first cohort of PhD graduates being conferred under what's known as the Federated Limerick Graduate School, or FLAGS for short. It's a collaboration between UL, Mary Immaculate and LIT, and it emerged from our cooperation as sister institutions in Limerick under the higher education regional cluster called the Shannon Consortium. And Adrian Chaplin, as his PhD today, is one of the first, in fact he's the third, you missed the first, uh, one to receive it under that new flag. So congratulations once again to Adrian. The PhD is the culmination of everything that we can do. There is no higher award. So congratulations again to Adrian. You all join a long line of graduates who have gone before you to take their place in society and in fact those who have helped to shape and mould that society. And this is the proud legacy that you can take with you now. This is something that you can take great pride in. Now this ceremony represents and marks the transition point from you being part of our student community to you being part of our community of LIT graduates. And I know that the staff here are very proud of you as indeed I am very proud of each and every one of you. I hope you share that pride and that your families and communities share that pride as well. But on behalf of you, the graduates, I'd also like to thank all the staff of LIT, academic and non-academic, who have helped you along the way. So I'd like to offer on your behalf a sincere thanks to, to you all. Well done, folks.
So you graduate today knowing that you have a, a respected qualification, a good education, uh, and a qualification that is recognised by employers worldwide, as Maria has shown you. We develop our programmes with industry, with communities, with state agencies and others. And you, the graduates, will benefit from this, as indeed will your family and your communities. Indeed, the economy and society of this state will be changed by you. Now, you're emerging into an economy that has improved immeasurably since the time you entered LIT. In fact, on Tuesday morning, the irishjobs.ie jobs index showed that Limerick was outperforming every other region in the country in terms of new job vacancies. With a 43% increase in job vacancies in the third quarter of uh, the year compared to the same period last year. It's a phenomenal performance. And it's due to employers such as Northern Trust and Regeneron expanding their operations here. And that is good news for all of you graduates today. So what is underpinning uh, these job figures? And in fact, LIT is a major factor in driving those job announcements. Companies invest when there are graduates available in the areas that they need them in. And one of our hallmarks is that we are plugged into those industries. We deliver the kind of education that employers need. You, the graduates, can hit the, the ground running. You have the skills to begin making a difference in your workplace right away. About 9 out of 10 people graduating from LIT last year went into paid employment or further education. And the prospects of waiting you now are, as I said, better than those that have awaited many of the classes that went before you in recent times. In fact, this region has entered into a virtuous cycle where investors come here to capitalise on the assets the region has. And chief amongst those assets is the supply of highly qualified graduates like yourselves. The FDA announcements of recent times highlighted this factor as the main determinant in their decision to come to Ireland. Tax helps, but the main determinant is the supply of skills and labour. Of course, the more they invest, the more economic activity increases and the more jobs are created. And the work you will do in your careers will give rise to further employment. Now, it's been a good year. I am very pleased that we in LIT have been successful in having 34 million promised to us by the Department of Education and Skills this year for two major capital projects. I'm going to say it again because I love that number. 34 million promised to us by the Department of Education and Skills. So we're going to have a new campus engineering focus at CUNA for a mere 14 million and our new 20 million science and IT building which will be right here in Moylish out the back door. These two projects are transformative for LIT and they're also hugely significant for this region as a whole, particularly when coupled with the new Northern Distributor Road which will form a knowledge corridor beginning at our Kuna campus and ending at the National Technology Park out in Plastic. These are all developments which will really help to keep that virtuous cycle going. It will help to keep the economy developing and it will help to sustain the jobs which will underpin many of your careers. And what we're doing together in Limerick is quite unique because we are collaborating, we're sharing knowledge, we're sharing experience in the hope that we can create a better region from that sharing. And by sharing that knowledge and by developing new ways of researching, we will be able to ensure that more industry will want to locate here and that more employers will stay here. So I think the benefit of these government decisions will be felt for quite some time. And the investment the state is making in us will pay off in spades. There are many other things that Maria has pointed out, but I think in this year, LIT's nascent role as a leading institution in the country for both traditional and new higher education apprenticeships is worth highlighting again. 
We believe that this model of learning, which can be applied in areas from finance to aviation to engineering to the built environment and indeed to the creative sector, has huge possibilities for individuals and indeed for employers. It means that people can earn as they learn and that their education will cover all relevant aspects of the skills as well as the knowledge they need for the industries they will work in. Of course, we've seen this successful model for many years in Germany, and we intend to have programmes from Level 6 right up to Level 9 Masters degrees being taught through this new higher education apprenticeship model. And of course, many of you graduates will also go on to do postgraduate study here. In fact, we have over 100 people now doing research postgraduates at the moment in a large number of areas. And it's so reassuring to see two of our own staff here today getting a Master's by Research and a PhD. Our own staff haven't come through that. And I have huge respect for people who do a day's job and also study and come out the far end. It's a particularly noteworthy. But not only that, but we're also currently supporting over 100 entrepreneurs in their businesses. At each of our educational campuses scattered across the region, we also locate an enterprise centre. And those enterprise centres are receiving support from the likes of Enterprise Ireland and through them into the businesses. So you must think that I'm a very happy man. Well, I should be, but I'm not. Because while this is all very positive, there is a but. And while the deficit in capital funding that the Institute of Technology sector has experienced for now on a decade is finally starting to be addressed, this is only half of the picture. The other half is how to keep funding the higher education sector in such a way that people from right across our society can access that higher education. There is no point in building new facilities if we make higher education less accessible to people. To make the state's investment in our infrastructure work, we need people to use that infrastructure and to learn and to develop through it. Higher education must be accessible to those who would derive benefit from it. This is the question that continues to rear its head as the Arachtus considers the Cassells report, which itself is an examination of options for funding higher education into the future. And the backdrop of the Cassells report is larger numbers of young people, and not so young, than ever before in the history of the state are looking for higher education. And more jobs are being created that require higher education qualifications. What this means is that more people have more demands on higher education. And this in turn means that funding, more funding will be required because the funding that is available at the moment cannot sustain the demand that's coming down the tracks. This is what a funding crisis looks like. We have one in Ireland and it's pretty stark. Castells found that the system in Ireland needed investment of over 1 billion euros over the next 15 years just to get back to the required standard that we had in 2008. That's how much the lack of investment there has been since 2008. Now that Cassell's report came up with three options to fund students into the future. But for me, there is only one critical point in the Cassell's outcomes. The outcome must ensure increased access to higher education and not lead to a decrease in that access. This is what we all need. Now, I'm not sure of you down there in the graduating class here today, if you would have had to think twice about coming to college, if you knew that you would have to repay a loan for fees, a loan that would probably cost in the tens of thousands and would take you years to pay off. Because that is one of the options that has now been explored for consideration by the uh, Ractus Committee. But I know there are people here today who would not be here if we had fees and an income contingent loan system to pay for them. That tells me that there's such a system has the potential to reduce access by removing the ability of some people to get into higher education. I don't want that. 
And I don't think the country needs that. The system of income contingent loans operates in England. And all the latest research says that access is starting to go backwards in that country. Recent reports from London Economics and the Institute of Fiscal Studies have made findings that we need to pay heed to. I am worried that if we start to fund higher education solely on the reintroduction of fees alongside an income contingent loan system in Ireland, it will serve neither individuals nor the country because it will discriminate against those who simply do not have the ability to take on large debts at the very start of their careers. It will reduce net earnings for graduates. It will make certain professions, including the caring professions, less attractive and will discriminate against parents who take time to have children or to rear them. So if we can see this in the UK and see the mistakes they're making and store up problems for itself, why should we in Ireland make the same mistakes and store up the same problems? I'm not saying that loans have a role to play in funding higher education. We all know for credit unions and banks have been funding higher education for a long time. What I am saying is that introducing fees with a loan system to blanket fund students means that you are fundamentally rebalancing the financing of higher education from the state into the private realm. It is starting to make the education you received here into a commodity and not a right. Graduates tend to have a lower use of the state's medical facilities. They tend to earn more and pay more tax. They require less social and housing supports and they are more likely to generate employment. In short, higher education is a win-win and it should be treated as such. The new economy demands highly skilled workers and we do need to fund quality teaching and learning. This is imperative after years of erosion where we saw student numbers grow by 37% in seven years, while core staffing dropped by 12%. Whatever system comes in, we cannot afford to leave some people behind. Nobody, no state, no society can afford that. If someone gets a higher education, whether it's apprenticeships, level six, seven, and eight, this brings huge benefits to society. It is transformative for certain cohorts of society, but the point is it is society, our society, that is the big winner overall with higher education rather than just the individual, as is often portrayed in the media. So we've got a crucial point in the future uh, direction of our entire higher education system. And the decisions made now <coughs> will have huge implications for all of us. And I just ask the Arachnus to consider deeply what way we want to go forward as a society. My rant is nearly over. Not quite. But I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with a story. I'm going to leave you with a story. And uh, everyone in the, in the graduating class here has a story. But this one I'm going to call about a student who will let's call Patrick. Now Patrick is a mature student. He had the opportunity after secondary school to go to higher education. It didn't really hold him back. He worked as a truck driver, as his father did before him. He married Margaret and had three children with his wife, and they built a good life together. But there was something there, some unfulfilled ambition, some feeling that he could do more. So when the circumstances allowed, Patrick sat down with his wife and decided to come back to college. This is a working man with a wife and three children and a mortgage. He came to college here in LIT with the benefit of a state grant. If there had been a loan system in place, how would he have done that? Given up his job to come back to college with a mortgage and three children? Who in the right mind is going to give a loan to such a man? Well, you don't give a loan to such a man. You give a grant. And his family, his community, our society will reap the benefit of such a grant. And that's what I mean when I say that access is important and that we all benefited from it. But back to Patrick. Patrick commuted on a daily basis from Thurlis to Moylish. He studied hard. He never missed an assignment. He never missed a deadline. He never missed a class. 
just like all the graduates here. <laughs> and Patrick got through it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, I don't wish to embarrass the man, but Patrick is here with us today. So Patrick Connolly, where are you? There you are. Stand up. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you for allowing us to share that story. Because it's a story of LIT. Because it's a story about people, individuals. Every single person here has a story. But it's about how we value higher education and the transformative nature it can. And we can't do that with fees and loans. So funding systems must be about people as well. And that is me finished. So today, it's about celebration. It's about reward for perseverance and hard work. And you've all done it. You've all made it through. Everyone here in LIT wishes you all the very best in the, layer, in the years ahead. We hope you remember us fondly, and please stay in touch through our alumni organisation. Congratulations from the heart to all of you. And I hope you've had the time of your lives. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've just come to the end of the conferring ceremony now. Just a few announcements. The official photographers are located outside, and after the event here, you're invited to join us for some light refreshments in the canteen area. I now declare this conferring ceremony closed. Please stand for the academic procession.